In the last stream, we were working on setting up this blood magic ritual over here, allowing us to generate infinite lava at the cost of life points from our blood network. And towards the end of the stream, we also worked on setting up this new simple storage network along with these link cables, allowing us to access all of our storage from this one storage request table. So now everything we have is in here. Um, I want to sort this by number of items, so by amount. So the items we have the most of are at the top. And if we scroll down, the items we have the least of are at the bottom. Uh, but now going forward, if we want to craft something, we can just come in here, shift click in the recipe. And if we have all the items, it will just pull them all from wherever they may be, making crafting so much easier. And then at the very end of the last stream, uh, we set up this little system right here with the block breaker, which is right there breaking stone which is being generated every time we drop uh, regular lava over flowing water that stone is broken by the block breaker and of course as with the start of the pack whenever you break stone you have a chance to get any of the stuff in this chest apart from the rotten flesh and the cactus the reason we're getting cactus is that uh, every now and again these uh, cacti right here hit the roof and like when they grow and hit the roof they pop off and when they pop off they're collected by this uh, item collector and of course the rotten flesh i assume a zombie died i did actually see a zombie pigman walking around earlier i'm not too sure how the zombie pigman might have died, thus leading us to get rotten flesh. Maybe they wandered into the grinding wheels, or maybe they wandered into the lava actually, which might make a bit more sense. But either way, uh, we do now have this system right here, which I have temporarily turned back on uh, to allow us to generate some resources. Uh, this is gonna start overflowing fairly shortly. However, the plan for today's stream is to hopefully set up a system that automatically processes all of the stuff that we're getting from this system the idea being that hopefully we can set up a system where all of the ores are taken crushed washed and sent to drawers in ingot form and all of the non-ores so all of the different variations of cobblestone are sent to their own storage drawers and voided when we have too many of them um, i did mention the void upgrade at the end of the last stream this is not too difficult to make. It's made from an upgrade template, which is one storage drawer and eight sticks. You get four of those at a time. And then if we surround that with obsidian, which we can now get from our lava and water, we can get these void upgrades, which we can then place into these storage drawers to void excess of, of all of these different kind of cobblestones that we don't really want. Speaking of these storage drawers, what I have gone ahead and done between streams is make quite a few more of these uh, two by two drawers. In fact, we're now exclusively using these two by two drawers, the old one by one drawers are in the system. And I've tried to organize these somewhat. So over on the left here, we have ingots. Down at the bottom, we've got all of our blocks, all of our cobblestones, our netherrack, our wood, that kind of stuff. Over here, we've got some of our gems and whatnot, diamonds, lapis, redstone, and nether quartz. We then have mob drops, and we've got some plant life in the top right. Somebody does ask in the Twitch chat if we have framed drawers in the pack. Unfortunately, framed drawers are not yet implemented in the 1.16 version of storage drawers. There is an add-on mod that adds framed drawers back in to the 1.16 version, but unfortunately it's not in the pack. If you're watching Pack Maker, it would be nice to add that back into the pack. I'd love to make these drawers uh, look like stone or look like something else to make them match more uh, with the wall. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, framed storage drawers are basically storage drawers that you can customize to look like any other block in the game so you can really kind of color match the base theme that you're going with and make them look a lot nicer than the default woods that are available but anyway i do think that at some point in today's stream i might actually move some of these ingots because right now they are in two by two drawers uh, but i think by the end of today's stream we might have them in compacting drawers we do have two of these already thanks to some quest rewards that we got earlier in the pack uh, but i do think we're probably going to want to make a few more of these uh, the reason for that will become apparent later on in today's stream uh, speaking of which let's quickly go ahead and claim all of our unclaimed rewards here we do have quite a few of these lying around and right before the stream started i was talking with the twitch chat and someone did remind me that uh, for completing this quest here, we did get an obsidian chest as a reward, and the obsidian chest is the highest tier of chest from the iron chests mod. And so uh, if we quickly search our system, we have it right here. And I think what I'm probably gonna do is shift right clicking with the carry on mod. I'm gonna move this uh, regular oak chest out of the way, throw down the obsidian chest, which is absolutely massive. And that's gonna give us a bunch more space so that hopefully throughout the course of today's stream, uh, we're not gonna run out of, uh, of space for all the stuff 
that we're going to add into our system. Speaking of which, I have locked all of these drawers, so every single drawer here is locked, meaning that whenever I put something in the system, like this compacting drawer here, it's not going to go into one of those drawers. Uh, in fact, nothing will go into these drawers until I put something in manually. Uh, so for example, if I put this flint and steel in here, it will go in that slot, and now only flint and steel can go in that slot. Of course, that's not something I want, so I'm going to real quick unlock that, take the flint and steel out, and then relock that now that it's empty. Now, speaking of all of the, the junk that we have in our inventory, things like the straw key, the wrench, and both of our sacrificial uh, daggers and knives right here, one thing that has been recommended to me quite a bit is a backpack. We do have this mod right here, the Sophisticated Backpacks mod installed. And so I think one of the first things we should do here is maybe look at investing in one of these backpacks. They're really not too difficult to make. They're made with four leather, four string, and a chest. The only thing here that we don't have right now is the four leather. Um, it's possible we don't have four string. Never mind, we totally do. Um, if we didn't, by the way, we do have 177 rotten flesh available. And so well, one thing we could do, as per usual, is just go ahead and drop that down. And much like with the cobble to wood, if we leave that for 30 seconds, it will turn into random mob drops. Uh, as for the leather, that's also something that we're going to get with rotten flesh, because our good old friend Blood Magic does add this recipe right here, where we can use four rotten flesh, one flint, and one bucket of water, along with 100 life points in our blood network to make four leather. Uh, thankfully, we should have basically everything we need there. We do have two flint in the system, and I think we actually also have um, a few more flint in here. We do. We've got uh, 11 more ready to go. Look at that. We've got a bunch of mob drops, including some enderpearls, some more string, all that good stuff, which we can double right click onto the draw controller, and that will all get instantly deposited into their respective storage drawers. But uh, real quick, let's grab one of those blood orbs. And let's re-grab the four rotten flesh. Between streams, I have moved the uh, alchemy table down to the alchemy room just to make a bit of space upstairs. Uh, in here, we can do one, two, three, four with the flint and the magician's blood orb. And of course, the final thing that we are missing is the bucket of water. I have also moved the sugarcane farm. Right now, we're not actively growing sugarcane. We do have 93, which I think should be enough for, uh, for quite some time here. Uh, that does also mean that I've currently picked up my unlimited water source. And I do kind of have to make a conscious effort here not to uh, not to lose that. In fact, I think what I'll do just to be on the safe side is kind of reset up that unlimited water source down here just so I don't have to go through the process of making water again using uh, using cactus. And there we go, we get four leather. Nice. At that point, that should be basically everything that we're going to need. Uh, also, these ladders could definitely do with being replaced, especially with the uh, the trinket that we got in the last stream, the uh, rock candy, which increases our movement speed. It's uh, a little tricky to try and stay in the center of that ladder there. Either way, if we come back over to here, boom, and boom, we get a backpack. This is pretty nifty by default not super big but you can upgrade this uh, there are multiple tiers you can get a regular uh, gold diamond and netherite backpack as well as an iron one as well and you can also get upgrades for this backpack as well like the magnet upgrade the feeding upgrade uh, the pickup upgrade there are quite a few upgrades that you can make for now i think we'll just take the regular backpack and once again if we click this little icon to the top left of our head we can place the backpack i believe in our backpack slot and at that point if we go controls and we type in backpack the default key binding is B. You can change this, of course, uh, but that means that as we're walking around, if we hit B, we open up that backpack without having to, you know, find it and right click it, which means going forward, we can keep stuff like our sacrificial knives and our draw keys and any kind of wrench that we might have, and maybe even a bucket and a flint and steel in our backpack, uh, because these are things that we use quite regularly and therefore do want to have on us, but ideally don't want to have clogging up our inventory all of the time. Now that we have that taken care of, the next thing that I want to work on before we start looking at uh, this ore processing system here is I think it's about time that we make an actual Tinker Smeltery, this quest right here. So the Smeltery controller is made in the casting basin with four ingots of molten copper and a seared heater. The seared heater uh, is thankfully a fairly easy recipe here with eight seared bricks. As per usual, we should be able to grab some of our seared stone and over in the bench store, we can just craft those down into seared brick. Once we have those, we can then craft that up, like so. This might seem like a lot of seared brick, but we are going to need quite a bit uh, to make the actual multi-block smeltery in just a second here. Let's throw that over in here, and this is actually where the casting basin that we made a few streams back comes into play, because uh, unlike the pickaxe heads here, uh, we can't do the seared heater recipe, where we pull the uh, molten copper over the seared heater 
in a casting table. You can put the casting table in there, but if you try and pull the molten copper over it, it just won't work. And so well, what we have to do instead is put down a casting basin, which for now we'll put down, I guess, right about there. I'm fairly certain that we did make two faucets. Yeah, we did, beautiful. So we can put that down right about there. At that point, I think it's probably gonna be worth us grabbing our ingot cast and pulling out the remaining ingot or two of iron that we have in here and also looking to grab some of the copper ore that we've been generating uh, and putting that in as well to get the four copper that we're going to have to pull over this sea heater. And boom, we get a smeltery controller. Nice. So at this point, we should now be able to make an actual tinker's smeltery. So I think what I am probably gonna do here is I'm probably gonna move this cactus. And I think I'll also move these berries and these furnaces here because I kind of like the idea of embedding this uh, multi-block smeltery into this back wall. I think that could look pretty cool. So the way that the uh, multi-block smeltery works is you place down a controller, like so, and then connected to that, you can kind of configure the size that you want. Uh, you can make this, I believe, anywhere from a one by one all the way up to, I think, a nine by nine in newer versions of Tinkers. So I'll show you the, the smallest smeltery that you can build right out of the gate here. Uh, for that, we are going to need some seared brick. Thankfully, we did get some as a quest, and we also have 209 seared brick ready to go that we can craft into seared bricks. But uh, the smallest smeltery that you can make looks something a little bit like this. Um, it does require a tank in order to actually function. Uh, right now, it's not going to do anything because it has no way of melting uh, the contents of that. But uh, if we go seared tank, we are after this guy right here, the seared fuel tank. Uh, this is made with one glass and eight seared brick. And what we can do here is we can place that down in any one of these three slots. For now, we'll do it, let's say, right about here. And then this is essentially a fully working smelter, or almost fully working, I guess. Uh, we also do want to get a seared drain, I believe it is. Seared drain. Yeah, this guy right here. Uh, this is going to allow us to pull out any of the things that we make in the smelter. Unlike with the melter over here, you can't pull directly out of the smeltery controller. You do have to have a drain for that. Uh, thankfully, that shouldn't be too difficult for us to do. Let's quickly grab some copper ore and begin running that through our crushing wheel here. Once we have that, we can then look at smelting some of that up. Another thing that people have been recommending quite a bit, both in the Twitch chat and in the YouTube chat, is the Iron Furnaces mod. So much like the Iron Chests mod, we can upgrade our furnaces uh, from the standard stone furnace up to an iron furnace, then a gold, then a diamond, then an emerald, then an obsidian, and then if we wanted to, a crystal. And there's also netherite uh, and rainbow as well uh, in this furnace mod. But uh, we can upgrade those, and they're essentially the exact same as regular furnaces. They're just faster. They don't use any more fuel. They use the same amount of fuel. They just do everything quicker than a regular furnace would. And so it might not be a terrible idea for us to look at making uh, at least the iron, if not the gold, or even diamond uh, furnace here right out of the gate, especially given that we do have uh, quite a bit of diamond ore. We've got 10 uh, diamond ore and 15 emerald ore ready to go. Also, I've made a grave mistake here. There we go. And uh, we do have even more ore in here. We've got another 12 diamond and another 12 emerald. So we could uh, look at throwing those in here and trying to get uh, all the way up to, say, an emerald furnace to try and make our furnaces quite quick. And even the obsidian one might not be terrible, although it does look like it requires blaze rods, which uh, we don't currently have access to. We could, of course, go through uh, to the nether and try and get some blaze rods. But uh, I think at the moment, uh, maybe we'll just try and go for diamond. While we wait for those diamonds to, uh, to get crushed down, we can head back over here and we should be able to make this smeltery drain. Again, you can put this in any one of these two slots now because we can't replace the, uh, the tank. So if we were to place this right about here, we could then put our faucet onto that, like so. And we could obviously have our casting table in the floor, like this. And now this essentially functions in the same way that this did. In fact, it's actually a slightly worse version of this because in here we only have uh, one slot to melt things, whereas in here we had three. So the benefit of making the smeltery is that you can make it much bigger than this. You can do it in a few ways, actually. So one way you can upgrade this is just by making it taller. So we could go ahead and just put down four blocks like this. And now if we look inside, we've got two slots as opposed to one. And you can do that really as much as you like. I don't know if there's a height limit on how high the smeltery can go. You can really make uh, some pretty massive smelteries. Uh, but a better way of making it bigger is by making it wider. As I mentioned before, this is kind of what I would call a one-by-one smeltery. Um, I believe you can make this up to 
Maybe seven by seven internal, nine by nine external. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's correct. For now, my go-to is usually a, a three by three internal smell tray, which is a five by five external smell tray, which looks a little something. Like this, you have a three by three, a grid of seared bricks on the ground. And then the wall is filled in with three at the back, three on the right, three on the left. Uh, you also want to do that at the front. So we're going to move this now. We're going to have our tank right about here. We're going to have our drain right about here. But I'm trying to pick up the, uh, the casting table. There it is. We're going to have a drain right about there. And again, we can have the casting table in the ground with the faucet like so. Uh, we can also put a second faucet on the other side like this. And that's where we could put our casting basin. For recipes that require it and now we have a much larger smeltery one that is slowly but surely filling up with even more junk because again our inventory keeps filling up with junk every single time that we uh, that we mine stone let me quickly try and get rid of some of that uh, real quick into this chest here but uh, this is now a much bigger smeltery uh, and again in the exact same way that we did before if we wanted to we could make this taller uh, this time it's going to require 12 seared brick three six nine and twelve in order to upgrade it to be one taller. Uh, but in doing so, we would make the smeltery uh, much larger in terms of its capacity. So if we quickly grab 12 seared brick, what we can do is we can get rid of these three, these three, and these three, at which point we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And now again, we have even more space to smelt even more stuff and maybe even more importantly, we have more space in the smeltery. This smeltery now able to hold 144 ingots as opposed to the uh, measly nine ingots that could be held in our initial melter, which at this point is uh, pretty useless. So we can go ahead and uh, take this down and uh, dump both of those items into our system. We're not really going to need those going forward at this point. We could probably also just delete them if we wanted to. Like I said, I don't really think it's going to be uh, super necessary. Uh, one mistake I did make there, uh, what I should probably do is actually put them in over here because by putting them in over here, any cobblestone blocks like the gabbro and the granite will go into their respective storage drawer instead of going into this random chest over here. Now, the reason that I've done this, the reason I've upgraded from the small smeltery to the bigger smeltery is that the bigger smeltery here allows us to make alloys. And the reason that we want alloys is that uh, also real quick, I'm going to do that just for uh, symmetry. Uh, but the reason that we want alloys is that uh, in order to get some of the items in the create mod, for example, the rotational speed controller here, we need brass. And brass is an alloy that we can make in our Tinker's smelter by alloying together molten copper and molten zinc. We do have both copper and zinc ready to go. We've got quite a bit of both of those ores, but you can't actually uh, make this alloy in the old melter system. So the old melter that we had, uh, you would have to have crushed brass ready to go. You can't make alloys in here. So if I were to try and put copper and zinc into the old melter, it wouldn't work. The copper would get melted and then the zinc just wouldn't melt. Whereas in the smeltery that we have now, we can actually make alloys and we can use those alloys uh, to progress further forward into the create mod. Real quick, before we do that, uh, let's grab the diamonds here and let's see if we can't upgrade this furnace all the way up to a diamond furnace. So to get started, we can upgrade a regular furnace to an iron furnace simply by surrounding it with iron ingots. From there, we can do the exact same thing with an iron furnace. This time it does require a block of gold in order to make that happen. I don't know if we quite have that much gold available. We don't, we're missing two gold. Thankfully, we do have some crushed gold all ready to go. And so we can throw that in over here and that should get smelted up fairly quickly. Uh, once that's done, in order to upgrade to a diamond furnace, it's just as simple as dropping uh, six diamonds and two glass around the gold furnace. And then the emerald furnace after that is just eight emeralds, which again, isn't really that expensive. We've got quite a few emerald ore and we get a guaranteed two emeralds from each emerald ore. And so if we just put four emerald ore into here, we're guaranteed eight emeralds with a chance of getting even more. So I think it's probably well worth just going straight up to the emerald tier. Now that we've got the gold ingots, we can make the gold furnace. From there, we can make our diamond furnace. And then any second now, once the emeralds are done being crushed, there we go, we got nine. At which point we can come over here, clear out our crafting grid. Boom, and boom, we get an emerald furnace. So let's give this a look, shall we? I'll put this down, maybe like over here for now. Again, we need to find a more permanent location for it fairly soon. But for now, if we drop in some coal and we drop in some crushed iron, 
this is now significantly faster than it was initially. And I'm also assuming that, yeah, we can add augments to this to make it even faster. We've got wireless heat receiver, blasting, halves the cooking time for blasting recipes, smoking, speed, and efficiency. So the speed one is the one that I'm most interested in. Halves the cook time for all recipes, uses twice the amount of fuel. The question I then have is, can you like stack those or can you only put one in? If you can only put one in, I think it's probably worth doing. I'm happy to pay double the fuel cost for double the speed. Let's give this a try. That is now significantly faster. That's definitely more in line with what I'm looking for. It does mean we only get four uh, ingots smelted for every one piece of coal, which is definitely not great. Yeah, so unfortunately it does look like you can only put one of these in here, which is a shame. Um, however, we can always save this and use it for another, you know, furnace, another emerald furnace, uh, if we want to, uh, to make another one in the future. Either way, now that that is taken care of, let's take a look at seeing if we can't set up this ore processing system. We want to crush the ores, wash the ores, and then send them around into the draw controller there. So the initial thing that I want to do here is I want to look at the rotation speed controller because this guy right here gives us an easier way of controlling rotational speed. Basically, what that means is that this device right here allows us to do what we're currently doing with this mess of big and small cogwheels. So what we can do is we can take the slow speed coming out of the windmill bearing and using the rotation speed controller, we can adjust the speed, uh, thus adjusting the amount of kinetic stress used without having to go through this you know, mess of, of cogwheels, which I think is gonna be super useful for us and is going to allow us to fit uh, similar systems into much smaller spaces. And it's also gonna give us uh, much more fine and granular control over just how, how fast or how slow we go with any given setup, right? So to make the rotational speed controller, we need two shafts, super easy, one brass casing. This is not too difficult. It's made with uh, planks, logs, and two brass sheets. The brass sheets we can get from brass ingots, which we can turn into brass sheets by pressing them using our mechanical press, which is hiding out right here. Uh, in preparation for that, I will quickly grab um, a little bit of copper, let's say four, and a little bit of zinc. I'm pretty sure that it's a one-to-one -one, uh, copper and zinc. I think one copper and one zinc gets you uh, two brass, so I'll throw both of those in. And also, uh, we do need to put lava into this tank. That's how the smeltery is fueled. But uh, I do believe this quest up here does actually give us a full uh, seared tank of lava, which we can use like so as our initial fuel. So those are going to slowly but surely melt down and form the zinc alloy, at which point we can then pull those out in ingot form. While we wait for that, the hard part about this recipe right here is the precision mechanism. So the precision mechanism is made with this sequenced assembly. So to make it, we have to take a golden plate and we have to run it through three deployers, one with a cogwheel, one with a large cogwheel, and one with an iron nugget. And as you can see at the bottom, we have to do this five times. And then if we do, we have an 80% chance to get a precision mechanism, which seems a little pricey, but I don't think this is really that bad. So let's have a look. Deployer. How expensive are the deployers to make? The deployers are made with two cogwheels, one brass handle, which is again even more brass, this time with an andesite alloy, another andesite casing, which at this point is super easy for us to make, and then an electron tube. The electron tube made with iron nuggets, redstone torches, and polished rose quartz. The polished rose quartz is made by sa using sandpaper on rose quartz, which we can make by crafting together nether quartz with redstone. Okay, this is very doable. Uh, we are running a little low on redstone, so let's quickly throw some more redstone ore into our crushing wheels here. In terms of the sandpaper, this is, as you would assume, super easy to make. It's one paper and one sand. That gets you sandpaper. You can automate the use of sandpaper. For now, though, I think we definitely will just be using this manually. Uh, while we wait for that, over here, this is good to go, so we can start pulling this out. The Twitch chat is pointing out that we can make a, a small plate gold cast here, much in the same way that we made a pickaxe head cast and an ingot cast, uh, thus allowing us to skip out the middleman that is the mechanical press. So instead of having to drop that down, which uh, we can't do at the moment because our item collector is set to too large of a range. Uh, by the way, one thing I didn't show you here, you can configure how large and you know in what directions the item collector collects things. So right now it's set to four by four by four, which gives it a total area of nine by nine by nine. So right now it goes and, and scans four blocks out in each direction. 
we can bring that in on really quite a few of the axes. We can bring that out on the X and Z axis. That's gonna change this here to be quite a small area. And then we can even probably bring it down one on the Y as well, because I don't think we're going that low down really. I think that might be fine. And at that point, we should then be able to do something like this. And we should hopefully, yeah, see that uh, press there slowly but surely produce a brass sheet. Nice. Uh, but going forward, I think the chat is correct in that uh, if we take two gold, and by two gold, I mean one gold ore, because now that we have a regular smeltering, uh, it does actually double ores. So unlike in the melter, in this guy, if we just put one gold in there, that will get us uh, two gold ingots, which we can then pull out over a plate. Uh, for this, I might as well use the brass plate we already have, and that's going to give us a plate cast that we can then use and so going forward instead of pulling the brass out in ingot form and then turning it into a plate we can just pull it out in plate form and skip the plate maker altogether like that nice over here, we do have a bunch of redstone now, which is good, and we should have a fair bit of quartz ready to go. We do, we've got 45 left. So if we do something like this, we get a rose quartz, and then the way that you use the sandpaper here is I believe we put the item that we want to send into our shield slot, or our offhand, and then if we right-click or hold right-click with the sandpaper, that's going to send that rose quartz into polished rose quartz. Nice. Pretty easy stuff. From there, we can uh, craft down one of our iron ingots into iron nuggets. We can uh, quickly craft up a redstone torch. And then from there, that should be pretty much everything that we need in order to make the electron tube. We do need three of these. So we are going to have to quickly make two more of those. One and two. Good stuff. Uh, from there, cogwheel wise, we do have nine. So we should be okay to make three of these deployers. Uh, casing wise, we've got 10 endocyte casing. So we're good on that front. All we need now is three brass hands, which requires yet more andesite alloy, which we should be able to make. Actually, we do already have three andesite alloy, so we're good on that front as well. All we need now is at 12 brass sheets, which we should be able to get from the 14 brass ingots that we have in our smell tray. Chat is reminding me that what we can do here, if we get a hopper and a lever, we can automate this over here. So what we can do is we can place the hopper underneath the casting table for now we'll do it like this and uh, that's going to automatically pull out any of the brass sheets that we create uh, and then what we can do is we can put a lever next to this seared faucet and at that point if we turn that on that's going to give a redstone signal to that faucet and that's going to allow it to continually pull out all of the uh, ingots inside of the smell tray um, it is going to go a bit far and it's going to make uh, one gold plate as well but i think that's kind of fine once we have 12 brass sheets, we can head on back over to our request table, and we should have basically everything it takes to make three of these uh, pointy brass hands. And then from there, we should be able to make three deployers. Nice. So now I'm fairly certain that these probably work in a similar way to the mechanical press, in that I think if we wanted to, we could just put them down, um, you know, pointing at the floor, and then we could just throw the items underneath them, and I think that would work, but I think an easier thing for us to do might be to look at getting our first conveyor belt. To do that, we are going to need some dried kelp, and to do that, we're going to need a lot more kelp than what we currently have. So with the recommendation of the Twitch chat, what we've done here Again, probably temporarily, we'll might maybe find a new room for this later, and we'll probably also look to try and automate uh, things like sugarcane, cactus, and uh, kelp with the create mod at some point fairly soon. But uh, basically, I've dug a tunnel down here, uh, put dirt right at the bottom, uh, put a ladder up one side, and so what we should be able to do is uh, drop down this water. That water is going to slowly but surely sink all the way down to the bottom. Apparently, you don't need dirt, which is news to me. But uh, once we have that, we can then just shift like we've been doing for all of our other plants, and that is going to grow some nice tall kelp, at which point we can then just hit this, and we get a rather nice amount that's going to float to the top uh, thanks to the new Minecraft mechanics. But uh, this is actually a much easier way than what I was thinking of doing, so thank you to the Twitch chat for this recommendation. And then uh, once we have that large amount of kelp, we can, of course, just take that and uh, begin smelting it up in order to get all of the dried kelp that we're going to need. So once we have some dried kelp, we can then craft that up into our first mechanical belt, like so. Uh, I think one will be fine for now. And so I think what I'm probably going to do here is I'm going to get rid of this big, small, big, small 
cogwheel setup that we currently have because again hopefully momentarily we're going to be able to get rid and replace this uh with this new rotational speed controller the the way the belts work by the way is uh we place shaft down like this and then let's also get another shaft for now again we'll take this one and we'll put that down uh let's see let's see one two three we'll put it down like here like that and then what we can do is if we get rid of these blocks with the belts you can right click on one shaft and then right click on another shaft and that will connect those two shafts together with belts and then in order to move those uh, in order to get those belts moving all you have to do is apply a rotational energy uh, to one of those shafts in any direction so if we apply it this way it's gonna go that way if we apply it this way counterclockwise it's gonna go backwards we of course want it going forwards and it's at this point that i'm thinking i should probably maybe move this forward by one although we can probably make this work with a little bit of a hodgepodge of gearboxes again this is all very temporary we're going to move this uh, fairly shortly but uh, if we do something like this and like this and then we go and get some shaft so here we have a regular gearbox uh, which is allowing us to go sideways then we have a vertical gearbox which is going to allow us to go down then we need to go back to going sideways to get to this like so uh, but to do that we need a vertical gearbox so let's craft that vertically like so that's going to convert it back from vertical to horizontal we can then do this and we should see slowly but surely this conveyor belt going now of course we have just gotten rid of all of the acceleration that we had and so this is actually going painfully slowly um but this system does work and then the idea here is that we can then put down our deployers if we do one two and three those point down and ideally are going to allow us to make the precision mechanism so basically what we need to do here is we need to get five cogwheels of the small variety which we don't have uh, oh no never mind we do we've got them in our inventory uh, five big cogwheels which we do have and then five iron nuggets because again we do have to go through this process five times thankfully you can put all of these into the deployers at once so to add an item to a deployer all you have to do is right click on the bottom so like right here of the deployer like so uh, if you try and put it on the hand I think it won't work so if you try and like right click onto the hand it's not going to do anything you have to right click on the bottom of the deployer not in the filter slot so just anywhere like here will do so we've got small cog wheel then big cog wheel then iron nugget so now all of these if we hold shift have their items you can see in the top left this one has five cog wheels this one has five large cog wheels this one has five iron nuggets cool now if we uh go ahead and right click to pick these up what we can do is we can take the gold plate I think it is and actually I didn't even think about this but we have accidentally made a gold sheet over here perfect and uh, we can take that and we can drop it down on our belt like so now again we could definitely do with a faster belt because right now the belt is painfully slow but <laughs> as the belt gets to this deployer the deployer is receiving a uh, kinetic energy from this gearbox going forward as it gets there the uh, deployer will slowly but surely plonk one small cogwheel onto the sheet. Then, very, very slowly, the belt will move the new item over to the next cogwheel. And the same process will begin again, this time with the large cogwheel instead of the small cogwheel. Once again, moving over, this time to the final deployer. This is the iron nugget deployer. which is going to deploy its iron nugget. And now what we have to do is pick this up. And if we look, you'll see it says sequence assembly, three out of 15, next deploy cogwheel, then deploy large cogwheel, then deploy iron nugget. So what we've just done there, we now have to do four more times. So we have to add four more of each of these items. So we just drop it down again and let it do the exact same thing. 
And once we've done it four more times, we will have, or we'll have an 80% chance to get a precision mechanism. The worst part about all of this chat, there's a 20% chance we get random trash. We don't even get what we want. That, that's not great odds. Like 80% is pretty high. So we are quite likely to get what we're after, but it's not ideal. And I think what I will do real quick is um, rekajigger this to try and make this belt not as painfully slow as it is. Quite a while later, we have the precision mechanism. We did, I guess, get a little lucky uh, in that we didn't get unlucky and we didn't get the 20% chance to fail. Um, I did have to set up this contraption again. So again, we've got the big cogwheel to small to big to small to big to small to big to small, just to speed up the rate at which the conveyor belt goes. And uh, that doesn't actually make the deployers any faster because they're not receiving that extra speed. They're just coming straight through the gearbox. But we do now have the precision mechanism. And so if we head back to our request table, uh, we should now have everything that we need outside of a brass casing, which we can almost make, which need two uh, brass sheets, which we do have lying around over here. Boom, boom, and boom. So now we can make the rotational speed controller and hopefully once and for all, get rid of this cogwheel nightmare because now what we can do is we can adjust the rotational speed using this controller. So let's have a look here. If I put this down, let me have a look real quick. Oh, I remember how this works. Yes. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this requires a cogwheel to go in it and then we give it power like this. So we give it power from our main power source and then we can use this wheel that we can then adjust. So if, for example, I get rid of these. Okay, let me get rid of this temporarily. We'll probably end up resetting this up because we are going to need more of those components. And in the future, we might even look to try and automate this um, as well to get more of those components. But uh, for now, if we just do something like this, we'll have a vertical gearbox coming out and then we'll have that go down into a, another vertical gearbox that will go forward into the rotational speed controller. We can then have this large cog wheel not go there. We want it ideally to go right about there. And so now, what we can do is we can pull our shaft power off of this large cogwheel. The benefit here is that you'll see we have the option to control the speed. So looking at this number, if you scroll down, the number will get smaller all the way to one. And if you set it to one, it goes very slowly. If we go up, we can scroll up. We can set it to maybe 16. It goes faster. We can set it to 24. It goes faster still. We can go all the way up to 256, at which point it is blisteringly fast. But essentially, this is the exact same thing we were doing before. We just don't need that mess of large cog wheel, small cog wheel, large cog wheel, small cog wheel over and over and over again. We can just do it with the one rotational speed controller. And ideally going forward, we probably want to have multiple of these because there are going to be different parts of the system that we want to go at different speeds, right? Um, for example, our belts, uh, in some scenarios, we want them to go fairly slow and our crushing wheels, uh, we want those to go pretty fast, but not too fast, because if they go too fast, then they start to use too many stress units, right? So uh, right now I'm just filling in the uh, the floor that we had to dig out moments ago. But uh, if we were to, for example, take this uh, crushing wheel and place it down on here, it's going to go real fast. Uh, but you'll see that right away, uh, it's at 2,048 stress units. It's overstressed because it's way too fast. So we'd have to bring that down to maybe 128. And that's still overstressed. We're, we're using 1,024 stress units and we're only producing 512. Uh, we could bring it down a little further. Maybe to 64. Yeah, at that point, it's going fast, faster than it was before. But again, it's still using too many stress units because right now that's using all 512 that our windmill bearing is generating. Uh, there are a few things we can do about that, of course. We can increase the number of stress units that our windmill can support. Uh, the easiest way for us to do that is simply to add more sails to the windmill. I believe that in order to get an increase, we'd have to double what we currently have. So right now, we currently have eight sails on. The recipe for the sails is still super easy, and we did start to up some more andesite over here. So we can get uh, another andesite alloy and then make another eight sail frames. Really, we're missing sticks of all things. That is completely fine. We can get eight sticks very quickly and boom we get eight cell frame so right now i think the easiest way for us to do this is to uh, wrench this 
which is going to rotate it, thus temporarily stopping it. Um, I think if you go one, two, three, four, if you just do that, I don't think that actually makes it any faster. So again, if we rotate this now back to facing the wood, and then we just right click it with an empty hand, you'll see it's still doing 512. If you want to actually get more than 512, we have to add another eight to the initial eight. So we started with eight, we've added another, another eight. So now if we once again rotate this to face forward and then right click it with an empty hand, we now have a stress capacity of 1024. Pretty cool. And I think we could do the same again if we added another eight. I think it would go up to like 1,570 some uh, or 1,005, whatever 512 plus 1,024 is. And then if we were to add another uh, eight after that, I think it would go up to 2,048. So we can add uh, even more of these sales to make this, uh, you know, able to hold even more uh, stress capacity. Uh, and of course, the mod does add other ways of generating uh, that stress capacity as well. There are water wheels, uh, there are even bigger windmills, there are, I believe, actual motors that we can make as well uh, to make things even faster, like the electrical motor, uh, which allows us to use redstone flux or FE, forge energy, uh, to convert that into mechanical power for stuff uh, like this. But going forward, this right here, this rotational speed controller is going to make our lives so much easier because, again, we just don't have to bother anymore with the big, small, big, small cogwheel setup people are asking if the cloth sail the white sail here is any faster from my testing it doesn't actually produce any more stress units or like you can't use any more stress units if you use the upgraded sails uh, these are just regular sails with white wool they do look a little nicer but if i was to replace all you know 16 sails here with white sails it would still have a kinetic stress capacity of 1,024 stress units, so it's really not worth investing in. What I do want to invest in, though, is a system that's going to allow us to automate the processing of our ores. So to do that, the first thing that I think we're going to want to get is an encased fan. The encased fan is going to allow us to wash our ores. So to make this, we need a shaft, we need two cog wheels, another andesite casing, and a propeller. The propeller is fairly easy to make. It's four iron uh, plates with one andesite alloy. Uh, right now, we are fairly low on andesite alloy. Um, however, we probably do have a fair bit of andesite in here. We do. We've got over a stack that we can now smelt up in our new fast furnace. Uh, let's quickly grab a good amount of coal here. In fact, we can use the tiny coal that we were given previously. Once we have a few of those, we can once again craft those up as per usual with some iron nuggets, which I'm hoping we have at least a few of. Never mind, we've got zero. That is completely fine. We do have a fair bit of iron ready to go here. Boom. And boom, we'll take as many of those as we can make. And then in terms of iron sheets, I think the best way for us to do that now is to take two iron ore, drop that into our smeltery, and then we can pull that out with the lever. In fact, it will be pulled out automatically with the lever into the iron sheets needed to make the propeller. The idea here is that uh, if you provide kinetic energy via shafts to the encased fan uh, and you put water in front of that encased fan, it will then create a washing effect in front of the encased fan. We can then use something like a mechanical belt to slowly but surely move our crushed ores along that belt, thus washing them into nuggets. So propeller and encased fan, cool. If we take this, and again, for now, We'll put it down like over here, like this. It's pretty fast, probably faster than it needs to be at the moment, but that's okay. Again, this is not gonna be its final resting place. This is just to kind of show off how it works. So if we put our water right here on top of that encased fan, that's gonna flow down in front of the encased fan and then change these particles into water particles. And then at that point, I think basically what we want to do is grab a little bit of cobblestone here. If we do something like this, and this, what we should be able to do is once again, throw down our mechanical belt like so. And then if we apply some rotational force to this, what we can then do is we can grab our uh, crushed ingots. So anything that we put through the crushing wheel setup gets turned into a crushed ingot. And then you can drop those onto the conveyor belt. Right now the conveyor belt's not moving, which I think might actually work to our advantage at the moment. If we do this, and then what should happen is slowly but surely, when it's exposed to this fan, that copper chunk should get transformed, look at that, into copper nuggets. Nice. So the idea here is that we want to set up a system that takes the ingots, or sorry, takes the ores out of here. So we want the iron ore, the copper ore, the zinc, the lead, the, the tin, etc. We want to take all of those ores 
out of here. We want to filter those out and we want to send them through to the crushing wheels. Once they've been crushed by the crushing wheels, they've gone, you know, through, we want to send them up to this chest, they get crushed. Once they've been through the crushing wheel, we want to send them over uh, to another chest that drops them onto this conveyor belt. We then want to make sure that we set the speed of the conveyor belt to the, like, to the perfect time so that when an item is dropped, it's going to slowly but surely move along the belt. And by the time it reaches the end of the belt, it's transformed into a, a nugget, into its nugget form. Once it gets to the end of the belt in nugget form, we then want to collect it uh, using some kind of chute, like this one right here. And then from there, we want to import all of those nuggets into the storage draw system. Um, and ideally, what we want to do, Chant, is we want to send all of our nuggets to compacting drawers because what compacting drawers do is they automatically convert nuggets into both ingots and blocks. So if I were to put these uh, copper nuggets into this compacting drawer, you'll see that right away, those nuggets are now available in both ingot and block form. And if we look inside, you'll see we have one ingot worth or one nugget worth. And so if we wanted to, we could just take it out in ingot form, essentially allowing us to auto craft all of our nuggets directly into ingots, just via the use of using a compacting drawer to store all of our ingots. So the first stage of this process is going to be filtering what we pull out of this chest because right now there's a bunch of junk in this chest and there are certain things that we want to pull out and send to our crushing wheels and other things that we don't want to send uh, to the crushing wheels right uh, all of the cobblestones so to do that i think we're going to have to invest in a funnel so there are two types of funnel there's the andesite funnel and the uh, the brass funnel if we look at the funnel here uh, you'll see that uh, we can use these to extract items from inventories the andesite funnel does just fine. It allows you to extract and insert, kind of like the um, the chute does. However, the brass funnel is a little better in that the brass funnel can be filtered. So I'm going to go ahead and bookmark the brass funnel real quick. We can unbookmark some of the other stuff over here. And what we can also do is we can look at getting a filter, which is this guy right here, and we can apply that filter to the brass funnel, allowing us to only pull out certain things. In our case, ores. The regular filter is super easy to make. It's two iron nuggets and one wool. Uh, right now, we actually don't have a wool, I'm pretty sure. We don't, and we only have three string. However, once again, uh, we do have a plethora of rotten flesh that we can drop to get that extra string. And what else do we need in terms of making the brass funnel? We need one dried kelp, two brass ingots, and one electron tube. So in terms of the brass ingots, let's quickly swap out our plate cast for our ingot cast, and then let's get some copper and some zinc into that smelter. I think I'm gonna make quite a bit of, uh, of brass here because I have a feeling we're going to do quite a bit of this going forward. The mob drop is done, so we can craft up our first bit of wool. Um, again, let me try and get rid of some of the stuff that we have uh, clogging up our inventory here because we do have an awful lot of stuff that we don't really need to be holding onto. One of the things we do need to be holding onto is the sandpaper because once again, we are gonna to have to get another one of these rose quartz and we are gonna to have to sand that down in our offhand. Perfect. Once again, we need another redstone torch, and from there we should be able to make another electron tube. And at that point, I think we have basically everything outside of the brass required to make this. Thankfully, in here, brass is made. We did pull out a little bit of zinc there by accident. Um, thankfully, we can just put that zinc back in. And that so long as the zinc melts before the uh, the brass is done being pulled out in ingot form, that should be fine. I am going to turn that off because we don't want all of our brass coming out in ingot form, I don't think. But uh, if we do something like this, we get two brass funnels. And if we do something like this just as soon as we craft up the wool we can then go ahead and also make the filter nice so over here what we can now do is we can put down the brass funnel and we can filter it using this filter so if you right click with the filter it comes up with this gui and so for example let's say that i take iron ore and i add that to the filter like so what we can then do is we can put down the brass funnel which by default is pointing inwards. Um, I believe we want to right click that with our wrench to change its direction um, to pointing outwards. But uh, if we first take our filter and right click it into this like filter square, like so, and then if we take our wrench and rotate this to outwards, that should begin dropping out iron ore. Now what's happening here is the iron ore is being instantly recollected by the item collector, which is of course less than ideal. So a little bit of testing with the Twitch chat later and if you put down a conveyor belt like this, in fact, I'll, I'll reset this up just to show you guys how it works. So we have, uh, you have to put down the, the brass funnel after the fact, but if you take your shaft and you place down the shaft, not like that, you want to place it down like that and like that, we can then set up our belt like so. 
And then you can put the funnel down after the fact, like this, that's gonna connect it to the belt. At that point, we can then add the filter, which may have been collected over here, it has, which we can put on there. Again, that's gonna filter it for iron ore. And then the Twitch chat very handily pointed out that there is a hand crank in the game. Uh, this is obviously not particularly useful for like long-term automation, but for little tests like this, the hand crank is super easy to make. It's uh, three wooden planks, one shaft and one andesite alloy, and it allows us to manually test out if this would work. And as it turns out, if we right click or hold right click on the shaft here, uh, on the hand crank here, it works. You'll see that the iron ore is pulled out, placed on the belt automatically, so the uh, advanced item collector doesn't have time to pick it up. And uh, if we go ahead and put, you know, iron ore back in here and we continue with the hand crank, you'll see that uh, only iron ore is extracted because only iron ore is on the filter. So the idea for us is that we're going to take this idea, but instead of just whitelisting iron ore, we're gonna whitelist all of the ores to go this way. And then we could do a similar thing on the other side. On the other side, we could either whitelist all of the other stuff, um, or we could just blacklist all of the ores. So we could put another filter or another funnel like here with another filter going onto another conveyor belt uh, and then all of that stuff could just head around into their respective storage drawers again hopefully with void upgrades so that we can send all of the stuff we don't want to our system and then once we have 512 of each of those items we can then go ahead and void the excess unfortunately chat we are now out of time for today and so we're not going to be able to get uh, the full ore processing system up and running in today's stream however what i think i'm going to do between streams is probably try and make another one of these rotation speed controllers because i think when we actually do set up the system we're going to want to have one rotation speed controller for our main machines things like our encased fan and our crushing wheels, and then potentially a second rotation speed controller for the conveyor belts that we have going from place to place, especially with the conveyor belt that is doing the washing, because as we saw earlier, it can take a little bit of time uh, for those ores to actually get washed into nuggets. And so we wanna make sure that we can configure the speed of that conveyor belt so that it's at the perfect speed uh, to allow us to drop the ores onto the conveyor belt and then have them become nuggets just before they get collected by the funnel or chute at the end of the conveyor belt. Um, I also think between streams, I will go ahead and try and get a bunch of obsidian. Uh, that's going to allow us to make all of the void upgrades that we're going to need when we start importing uh, large amounts of andesite, cobble, stone, diorite, granite, basalt, gabbro, all of that stuff. When we start importing that, we're going to want to make sure that we can avoid the excess so that we don't back up our system and just, you know, overflow on all of the junk cobblestones that we don't really need a massive amount of. But yeah, I think I'll do that between streams. I'll also try and tear down most of this stuff here to give us a bit of a clean slate um, when it comes to setting up that all processing system. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.